Hello and welcome to another video. I'm another Magento dev. In this video, we're going to be looking at setting up a really basic Magento deployment pipeline. We've connected our Magento install to a Bitbucket repository. We've done it correctly. Um, I talked about that in a in another video. Um, now we're looking at connecting that repository to a de deployment pipeline. Loads of different ways you can do it. Um, I'm going to use this here, which is uh, our um, DeployBot account. Um, obviously, you can search for DeployBot on the internet. Um, there's others, DeployHQ, which I'm going to do another video on. And, and even some hosting providers, um, I use one called Corfinity, which they have their own sort of deployment mechanism built in. The reason they do it is because they're like, it's proper pro hosting. They, they use um, containers, um, Kubernetes containers via Docker or something and they have all these nodes that need to come online with your static content and stuff so they sort of provide you with the um, link to the repository but essentially it's the same thing and the, the bits you need to know about um, and get, get to grips with like what order to run the commands when you're in production and all that type of stuff and um, what to expect um, what what it, basically what it actually does is um is all good information that every sort of dev should know it's that bit of devops that that in magento dev you you should you should know um, and you should be comfortable with as well and then because for me it's it's the deployments um is is when your site's at the most is most sort of vulnerable uh, production particularly like when you're running a deployment they take a while so it's not something that you can just rectify if something goes wrong very quickly and you want to be certain that when you're deploying to production you're doing so safely with um with the most minimum of risk but most of all you need to understand what you're doing what commands are doing what why they're in a certain order what what the what the mix of commands are, are sort of doing and this hopefully in this sort of video this video should should help you get get to grips with that if you've never done it before or you you hardly done it before so i'm going to run through an actual setup now this software to be fair it's 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 dog slow so i'm hoping i don't have to pause the video but we'll see how we get on so i'm just going to click to set up a new environment right i'm going to link it to a site that i'm going to create here so this is this isn't Coffinity, what I was talking about a second ago, which is my preferred host for production sites. This is um, a Nimbus account, and they run a really good piece of software, or they offer a really good piece of software um, called Storm. And it's, it's, it's a GUI for being able to provision your servers, essentially. Um, and and it, it just provides you with really good, um, really good functionality and, and really good, a really good insight into into what you need to change to manage your Magento versus you know things like the public folder and stuff and what you need to point different things to that config um, changing p and testing different PHP versions is pretty is pretty succinct and stuff on it as well so I'm gonna I'm gonna set up this um, I am just gonna pause the video here I'm gonna get this set up because it's gonna take me a few minutes right now okay so this was that just set this up so I've just set up like my staging domain basically Magento headlessdigital.com um, right so so yeah so Storm gives you a load of good controls um, I've just made sure I can connect to the new SFT, um, SSH uh, that has been created along with like the, the instance of the server and as you can see you can sort of see the um, best zoom in um, you can sort of see you know, sort of see the um, folder structure here you've just got a public folder um yeah we can we can deploy it into the public folder that ain't going to be an issue you could deploy it outside the public folder and change the name of this i'm not going to i'm going to do something else um i'm going to do something else but this is all sort of uh going to be needed in a, in a sec so right <coughs> excuse me i was also i was almost i was setting up this uh let's call it a test at the minute um I was setting up the deployment pipeline so right it's only detecting a um, master branch because I've connected this uh, one of the reasons I stopped the Bitbucket video and started this one is because I wanted to go through the setup of this connecting the um, 
Bitbook repository. It's basically just a wizard, so you're not going to have any trouble going through it. I thought it would be pointless to put it in a video, but just basically, and, and there was a few sensitive details on there as well, which I didn't want to wear. Um, she didn't want to expose. So essentially, it's it's it could do some cool stuff like notify deployments in in uh, in Slack and, and and what have you. Um, I'm gonna set it to manual deployment, automatic. Sometimes in staging device uh, staging environments, you have automatic. What that does is there. Never never um. It says there, don't deploy, uh, don't use this to in a production environment. Yeah. So when you git push origin develop staging master main whatever it is, if you got that set there, it just deploys straight away. Um, if you set it to manual, you have to then come into your software, and all as I said, all software will will have this. And um, incidentally, Storm actually gives you a way of deploying. Um, same 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 difference here look you can connect your bitbucket account to this um, and you can deploy quite easily through storm in fact i might do a video on that i've not ever set one up for magento before uh, but you should you will be able to um, and that that's a real simple way the only difference is that that this it's never going to give you the ability to do a zero downtime deploy now that isn't what this video is about this video is just a standard basic deploy um, which you would be able to do in this software and this software um, and the reason I'm doing that first is well because it's less complicated to set up so I'm gonna have to, I'll do a different video on that altogether I can't do them both in the same one it'd just be too much passing around so right I'm gonna go for manual deploy I'm gonna save that um, and then this is this is the key thing so atomic SFTP is zero downtime deploy um, if you're deploying to a digital ocean you can get a zero downtime look deploy for DigitalOcean specifically um, and and zero downtime I won't go into too much detail now but the, essentially the concept is that you have releases folders and then they symlink to a current directory um, which is your, your site and um, I want to do a separate video not because of just the complexities of the setup but because of the pitfalls that there's many and um, there's many pitfalls when, when setting those things up and um, I'm gonna go for normal SFTP though uh, for this one Right, so uh, what we're going to call this, we'll just call it M24. Um, that's there. Okay, right, I've already got the IP address of this server because I've connected to it before. Um, but yeah, you can cut most, most of the time, you'll be able to find out the IP address of your server. Um, for me, it is, where is it? I'll have to go to the servers, and, and it's there, look. So that's the same IP address. So I'd always advise just connecting to the IP address. Port 22 is open for me. The username, this essentially is my SSH um, details. So I'll just jump back over to my SSH details. Um, so we're looking at that one. Um, and then we're looking at the password as well in there. What this is going to do first is it's just going to see if it can connect. Now the destination path is made when um, it's generated by the by the process of creating a website, um, and you can you can see it here. Look, the document route there. So it's created this one for me. I'm gonna bang that in there. Um, however, I want the destination path to be the public directory. I'm gonna put it inside the public directory, um, and I'm gonna try and connect to it. Actually, I don't think I need the forward slash on that. I'm just going to disconnect. I'm going to connect again. I don't want to tell you right. Yeah, it don't matter about the forward slash. So that's that's my directory there. The next thing it's going to do <coughs> is make sure the permissions are correct. It's going to write to that directory. Yeah, it's good. Right, with DeployBot, and it might be the case with um, other deployment systems, it you have to make sure that your server is not blacklisting any of the uh, any of the IP addresses of the server it's connecting from. So with DeployBot, there's like thirteen different um, thirteen different IP addresses uh, to manage. If I just go to my security, look, I've had to enter all the IP addresses that it could possibly ping the site from. Oh, there's more than thirteen there. There's there's loads. Um, so 
this one's already set up so I've had to go in there in this software and just do that manually but however you do that for your uh, site itself then you know you're um, yeah you're, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sort that out otherwise this process will won't set up right now we're into the good stuff so the, with Magento it's, fa it's fairly straightforward really what, what you need to do so for the purposes of what I'm talking about here there isn't any um, anything to run before um, before the deploy we're gonna what you can do here I've talked about in another video is that you can um, you can install node and you can compile all your CSS in, in if you're using mix for example if you're using a mix theme like I was in another tutorial you can put you can um, basically install node and um, run node and run your um, install Install a version of Node, run a version of Yarn, run Yarn to, de uh, to deploy your static assets using Mix. You know, minify everything and that if you want. But I mean, that that helps from a process perspective if you're using, like, if you're sharing CSS files, you only really want to share the SCSS files, not the compiled styles. What you want to do is compile that. You what you could do is compile your style sheet inside the theme folder just before the deployment runs from Magento because Magento and it doesn't have to be minified because Magento is going to minify. You can run settings in Magento. And I can go through them uh, in this video actually for optimizing your CSS files and minifying them. Um, Magento has, already has the capability of doing that. So before deployment, we're not going to look at right now. Right, these things are to be excluded um, from. The, the, these folders are to be excluded from the deployment. Remember, I'm, I talked about this in the last video. There's certain things that we've excluded from the Bitbucket repository, but there's also then going to be um, folders that work, even if they're in the Bitbook repository, Bitbook, rip, Bitbucket repository, we're going to exclude from this deployment process. Okay, and those are, right, crucial one. We haven't talked about it yet, but it's absolutely crucial. The env.php, you don't. That's not right. At the env.php, you don't want that to sync. I mean, you don't put that in your repository, but you don't want it. I just put it in there as a, a, a precaution, just in case for whatever reason, you know, just in case it gets sent to the repository. Um, now, I did notice actually in this file. This is why you've got to really pay attention to your git ignore. Um, it should be in the git ignore, but look at that. This is in the git ignore. See, I would never do that because the config PHP updates when you add new extensions and stuff. So you do need to send that to the server, um, in my opinion, depending on whether it, if you only ever plan to do um, your extension, add your extensions through Composer, then it'll it'll be updated on the server. Will will the config PHP it'll it'll update in the process of setup upgrade, but. You might not always want to do that and you might want to switch things off manually in that file so i don't think there's any reason why you can't send that git yeah, config php to the to the server um so that begs the question what do you do with with the end file like you've got to have one already on the server so we're going to have to put that um we're going to have to upload that to the server um in into its actual location so we'll do that in a second um but Right, let's set this up. So your env, and then also you want anything in pub as well. Um, any any sort of if you've got a blog integration or something like that, you might want to put in like pub blog. If you've got anything that lives in your pub, you might not want to you might not want to deploy that because pub is the type of folder that's going to be constantly impacted by like static content generation, media files and all that type of stuff. So you, you probably don't want to be uh, you don't want to be syncing your pub. There's arguments for and against that to be honest. On this occasion we're not gonna I'm not gonna put it in there. Um, generated now I don't include generated because when your modules compile generated code is is generated. Um, and so I'll take that out and also VAR I don't want to sync anything if I'm testing anything locally like login or import exports going to VAR anything like that don't want to sync those things uh, onto uh, any onto like the server um, dev don't really need to sync the dev folder which is this one in Magento which is like tests and tools and unit testing and all that type of stuff um, I don't want to don't want to sync that 
um, and I also then for the purposes of this one you want any sort of other auxiliary files that you might have used like for example in, in my, in my uh, deployments uh, in my theme and in the theme of the site that I'm actually uh, syncing up there um, you might have your manifest and stuff in the root file you might have those things in your root um, and if so you want to put those in as well but I'm not um, I'm not going to include those and then one of the most crucial ones ever is um, it should be on every every deployment of every site to make sure you are including it is the one that it gives you by default and that's node you never want to mistakenly try and sync that because your deployments will take weeks so that's basically it I mean that that is quite a clean you can add and you, obviously depending on your environment you won't, might want to change that but that's a fairly clean um, ex, you know section there um, this is what I'm copying off so I'm going through them one at a time though so the next thing you want to do on a standard deploy is you want to put the site in maintenance mode so that basically throws a 305 a 503 error sorry on the on the front end I'm going to do a video on how to make a nice little custom uh, 503 which it want to be a real short video I am going to do that so that might be one to watch I might tag it up here somewhere um, so you enable maintenance mode and then particularly in sort of my testing and staging environments I, I clear these out and the reason I clear these out is because if I ever wanted to move to a zero downtime deploy then my zero downtime deploy basically deploys a brand new Magento to a releases folder and then builds the Magento via the, the install scripts which follow next like composer install which fills out the vendor folder obviously clearing out the cache helps because it gets rid of anything that's stuck there so you can see your changes page cache pre-processed get rid of all those and obviously your static content is then built by your static content which we'll get to so your static content command so we've got the next thing I would then run Composer once I've cleared those folders. Um, I'd then run, basically just go through the big four. So set up upgrade, I'd run DI compile. Spoke about this before. Still on the fence whether um, that's that's required or not. Um, because I think I've seen sites in production mode that, that, that all of gen so basically DI compile in, in development mode, in developer mode, generates you generate code. I've seen it develop do it from a deploy they do it from this command as well but I've also seen it fail as well and and I've had trouble with it so I, I put it in there because it doesn't seem to hurt anything when it's running particularly if you're bunging the site in maintenance mode clearing all the folders out and starting again um, I flush the cache I disable the maintenance mode and then just for good measure I'll just enable the cache at the end so those are my deployment commands. I mean, yeah, they're, they're fairly fairly straightforward. Anything you'd run locally, really. So you can sort of test this locally before before we do it and make sure that the site builds and it works locally with these commands. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna save that there, that is it. We don't really fill out anymore. Um, I'm gonna save that there and that'll create me a deployment instance for this site. Now let's talk about the M file and what we do. What we do with that. Um, now, for the first, when you're setting this up, so this is all set up now. Basically, that is it. This is ready to go. Uh, when when you're setting this up, you've got to get the the M file on the server, but you've also got to get Magento on the on the server fully. So before I run my first deploy. I would async all of the files up into public. I would send every I would send everything up there. Um, obviously, that's why I mentioned we'll I removed um, the vendor folder. I basically, do you know what? Do you know what we'll do? We'll do it another way around. Right. So this is what we'll do. Because some of the deploy commands are going to work on the first deploy, if I do this, uh, because the like setup upgrading going to run because there'll be no M files. So basically, what I'm thinking of on the fly now is if I run a deploy, I'm I'm going to run it up to this point. I'm going to run it up to this point, 
obviously I don't even need those to be fair because um, there's not, not going to be anything there for it to sink right I'm going to I'm gonna first ever time do this right just run your composer install I mean, you don't even have to do that to be fair we don't even have to do any, any post deploy commands you could run your composer install but let's not even be bothered we'll come back to those right I'm going to trigger this it will take ages so basically what it's going to do is I'm going to run my first deploy on this site and it's going to grab everything in the bit bucket and it's going to wham it all into uh, the public folder because that's where I told bit bucket my uh, not bit bucket deploy bot my where my um, there we go initial commit it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna deploy everything um, with any luck let's see what it does so I'm gonna start deployment. I'm, I'm, it will take a while, but I'll do this first bit. So what it does is it throws this into the queue. You can view a log. Uh, most of most software that does this will have a log, and you can sort of see it in action doing it doing its thing. So it's creating all the folders. Look, and we could actually. Yeah, we can see it doing it on the fly. Look, so it's throwing everything in there. I've just noticed. Um, it gives me a uh, storm when it's created the site has given me a uh, index HTML that'll fuck things up so we'll just get rid of that but look it's creating everything on the fly now I'm gonna pause the video there and I'm gonna come back because this will take a while right then right then welcome back Um, it did deploy it took about 30 minutes uh, yesterday afternoon um, it's the day after now it did take all night but uh, it's best time I've been able to get back to it so I've got my initial commit I've got my deploy and the evidence of that is here look so you can see there's Magento there and if I go to the front end so I'll have a look at my website auto load error because there's nothing in Bender Composer needs to run um, obviously I can run Composer uh, to build that out which is what I will probably do next but after this so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a database in there because to run the setup upgrade scripts and the, the deployed scripts after Composer I need a database connected and I'm also going to put my env file on there um, and also uh, config PHP because that was git ignored so I need to I need to put that in there so a couple of things I need to do in there so we'll just have a quick look at the database right so that's the database we're going into that's nice and easy so we'll, we'll just do that now so I'll just up another entity right and we'll get it out into downloads right so it's called m2 and um, so i will do my sql dump and um, my local user is root that's why it is going to be root and um, and then m2 and then output is m2 backup oh, sql back okay this shouldn't take too long Yeah, brilliant, that's gone through. Right, so obviously I want to change the URLs. So this is this is what I would do, right? I'll get that. Um, I like to do these things. When I'm setting things up, I love a manual process. I know I could find and replace in all kinds of different ways, but I love a manual process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the actual database I've just exported in VS Code, and I'm going to find and replace for a couple of things. First, I'm going to check for definers. Right, there's only one definer. Now, some versions of SQL, when you're exporting, you'll get about 80 different definers, um, and they're all like this. They're all they all look like this. Um, if you've got a different database user on your server than you have local, which you should have, because you shouldn't be using root on your server, then you'll get issues importing the database. So all I'm going to do. Is I'm going to remove this define area, and all I do is basically you can do a find and replace to do this, but I'm just going to do that so it doesn't cause any issues up on the server. I'm also going to do a quick search for the URL, which was m two four dot test. That's my local URL, and I'm just going to do a quick find and replace for the new URL, which is this one here, um, or this one the best way to do it um, where am I yeah nope there 
quick find and replace for that. Make sure you've got no daft spaces or anything in there, just make sure it's correct before you run this. And look, that would cause a problem, wouldn't it? So we'll just run a replace. <laughs> There's only one, one. I, I ain't added any content. Obviously, the more content you're adding, the, 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 you know, the more further along in, in build or production your database is. Um, look, it's just the web on secure URL that's filled in. Then the more URLs you're going to have to replace, but you get the idea. You could have thousands in there. So I'm just going to replace that dead quick, and then when this goes into the server, it'll it'll work straight away because it'll be looking for the right. Um, They'll be looking for the right data database, uh, looking for the right site and uh, URL. So, right, to import this then, so I've ended up with that. Look, if I just make that longer, and then I'm going to need the password. So, getting the backup, SCP the backup up to that user at that password, uh, at that location, and then I'm looking for this directory. Um, actually, bit of an error there, I need to, it's like that. Um, right. We'll see if this goes up. I'll just paste the URL in. There we go, up it goes. Lovely, that's gone. Uh, right, it won't actually in this directory, so I'll just come out of this directory. It should be there. M2 backup, there it is, lovely. So from this folder, I can import it into my. Um, into my database, which was here. There we go. So, right. So to import, I just do my SQL. So I'm logging into my SQL minus U, and the username is this one here. So I'll just have that username. Now this might not go because I might have to log in as root user to do it, but we'll give it a go. And then if I do need to log into root user. Can easily do that with Storm to be fair, um, but we'll give it a go. Uh, okay, minus, uh, so that's the database name next. So I'm importing it into that database, um, and then I'm using the import flag and then m2 underscore backup sequel, and then the password is which one that sec is here. So just copy that password. Oof. Okay, so database imported. Um, let's just have a quick check. Yeah, we're in. We're in. Um, make sure everything's there. Yeah, looks okay to me. A quick tip: like wish list items, normally the last thing in a in a new, you know, in something that's just base Magento install. Um, I'm just let's have a look at core, make sure this one is all looking good. Yeah, 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 all good. Yeah, we, we, we've got this in there. Um, okay, right, we, we, we're, we're, we're ready to go. Um, we are ready to go in terms of the database structure. Next things, we've just got to get in, um, just got to get in the RM file. So. We'll just ping back over to VS Code. So this was my database back up. Let's go back over to VS because we can import this one um, and just change some stuff. But we'll check, we'll check, right, right, again. Again, it's feeling your way through it. So I'm just gonna, um, well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show the absence of uh, public, show the absence Of, um, of these files. Actually, just one thing to note, you know, I've gone to straight to the public and it's showing an autoload error. So I, d I haven't had to change my root directory to um, to flow forward slash pub. I'm not sure why. Um, okay. Okay, right, so we'll go CD app. Etc. Right. Okay. Yeah. You see, we've got no config file, and we've got no um, we've got no um, env. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, go into this folder here, open an integrated terminal, and then I can SCP them from here. So I'll do SCP. Um, in fact, very similar to this one. 
So I'll do SCP but except poor Blake. Um, poor Blake. What was it? It is app and it is etc. Okay, so they're going to go into there. We need the password again. So we'll, we'll, we'll ping. First of all, we'll just get config up. Just make sure that it's working all right. So we'll get config up there. And so we've got password. Up she goes. Okay, config files in there. We're happy with that. Um, right, this one we need to just make a couple of changes before um, I send it up. So I'm just gonna um, so I don't expose any database passwords or anything like that. Uh, so I'm putting in the. Um, you'll have to take my word for it. I'm just putting in the database details into the config. Uh, now show you there look changing this to production mode and then I'm gonna see turn all these caches on. So one by default. I know I enable them but let's just do it as we mean to um, and then I'm gonna put the actual domain in in here as well. This can go up to see him again. Okay, M's up here. Okay, right. Just keep doing that because we don't need to see that again. But I am going to actually um, tell you what, put that back because I still want to use that locally, don't I? Uh, so I'll just put that back there for now. So my local one always works, but the, the right one's gone up to um, gone up to the server. So we'll just double check. Okay, everything's there. So now I should be able to run deployment commands in this directory. Just before I run a sort of a file deploy, um, I should be able to run in here. Um, bin. Actually, no. Composer install first. Is what I need to do. Right, I'm gonna sort out the authentication. Okay, so I just cut it there because I've put some details into the off JSON into my off JSON. Um, I'm just gonna send that up to the server again because I've not done that. Um, I'm not putting that locally. So the off JSON contain can contain your Magento keys basically for being able to run. Um, so that's a key thing to note. Obviously you can put them straight into the console from that error that I got, but I will prepare to um, try again. So I'm just gonna do um our Vendor again, just clear it out, make sure it's nice and clear, and then I'm going to run Composer install again. Right, okay, so Composer's installed, it did take a fair bit of time to be honest. Um, okay, next, so what we can do now, in fact, um, we'll just have a quick look. So, um, so Vendor should have some in it. Yeah, we're all installed because that was Composer. Um, but static and let's just have a look. So like generated code, so we do pub, we'll look at pub static. Um, empty, yeah. So so right, let, let's set up the deploy. Let's let's do it this way. I could run, if I wanted to, I could run um set up upgrade and, and the big four basically now get the site online, get the site working. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave it to the deploy because I can take you through this. So let's go to servers and settings in here. Um, and then we're gonna add in the Magento deploy commands to the uh, servers here. And then we're gonna run another deploy and then this time it'll async the new files because I've got some new files to send up handily. Um, and then it'll run this after the deployment. So I'm gonna paste these back in rather than take them out again. So I took them all out, but I'll paste them in and we'll go back through them. So what we're doing is maintenance mode, 
vendor clear, cache clear, static clear, generation, all the caches, get rid. Run composer again, it's not gonna work because we need to do it on uh, every deploy anyway. Um, I'm not actually clearing out vendor there. Oh, I am, sorry, yeah, clearing out vendor, so I've gotta run composer again. So this is this is simulating a container release system as well. This is simulating um, zero downtime, which is, it's handy to get used to it, then move on to that, that's your next step, and it'll be one of my next videos, I'll do zero downtime. And then, yeah, flush the cache, deploy, uh, disable maintenance and enable the caches afterwards so we'll just save that so what we'll do is we'll just jump into VS Code um, and we will just commit these files so what we're committing here git ignore because we removed config from it because we want that to start going up got me off JSON as well um, with the keys and the config file is going to go up but they're already there so it's not gonna it's not gonna make too much of a difference but we'll just we'll commit these um we'll call it git ignore config off right, and, and we'll do a sync them changes okay so now they've been updated now if i go to deploy because i've got this set to manual deploys it's still saying initial commit so i'll wait for them to hit the repo five four three two one give this a refresh and it should give me my new deploy telling me the commands it's going to run which is which is great you see it was saying redeploy all files that's because it had not detected any changes but you don't want to do it because it'll take forever do that in an emergency but now it's changed to start deployment because it's only going to do the one commit it's not, and you can even preview the files that are going to be deployed, um, and it is those two, right? Because obviously, it ain't going to deploy the gig, no. Okay, so we'll start that deployment. Now, this is probably going to take ages again. <laughs> Just have a quick look at what it's doing, putting it in the queue. What I'll do is I'll pause this and I'll show you the result in the log. And right, okay, that's gone through. Um, so, as you can see, it's created those two files that needed creating and then it's entered maintenance mode um, it's run composer um, done everything it needed to do it's then jumped into set, uh, setup upgrade let's run that it's then jumped into in a second a long one. DI compile there. Then deployment of the theme, clear cache, disable maintenance mode, and then having been cleared, there's nothing to change when I've tried to enable it, but let's not worry about that. So now moment of truth is so we've got a record of it here. Uh, moment of truth is can we access the site? And the answer to that is of sorts is the answer to that um right i think i know what this is so I remember before i said about um the so let's see this is the problem anyway these are all 404 look these are all 404 all bust right remember before i said it seems to be displaying in the um public directory so i've installed it in public right but Magento actually exists in our install anyway, in this install, and it always should really, in forward slash pub and static. So we need to make that the root directory and um, not public. So we'll just do that now, and I believe it's in advanced on Storm. This is why I like Storm, um, because it's stuff's just easy to locate the server stuff server provisioning stuff which everyone hates is um is easy to is easy to find now there is another nuance and it's it is on a storm and this is why i don't use them for production uh is it does their nginx config doesn't like magento so i have to switch off nginx ca page caching performance probably is going to be um there we go, save static files with Nginx, I've got to switch that off. Um, just wait for these processes to go through. 
which in in the best because we know nginx is is sort of can be configured for speed can be configured for page speed page caching all that type of stuff which is all great um but unfortunately not um there we go it's up and running now so what i've done there is i have changed the root directory um let's just see if it's showing any products make sure elastic search is kicked in um yeah we're working right no images have i and that's because answers in the comments comment as many times as you like it'll make the video do better um i've not uploaded media to the server so i need to async that up to the server now so we'll, we'll do that as like the final the final job so the reason it hasn't gone up is because and i begin it was in another vi the video i did preceding this one which was regarding my bit bucket um media is not or some media folders particularly this one is not um is not going to the repo so i'm gonna sync these up so i'm gonna just go into the media folder and i'm gonna grab back my command for there we go for our syncing because a lot of it is here and i'll just jump on top of this right so what am i going to do here i'm going to r sync i'm going to do AV, and i'm going <clears> to <throat> sync the catalog folder which is here as you can see so it's the main catalog folder and it'll have it could have category images in it as well obviously this one doesn't but you want to do the full catalog folder really um public and i want it to go into public pub media and then i'm doing the full folder so i need it that to have a forward slash on it um yeah that looks all right to me i'm just gonna whack a password in for ssh i really should get my key on there working but do for the purposes of this it gives you some thinking time while i'm doing that done it so that should be banging up there now into its relevant folders um right the other things that i need to really consider is let's just have a look at the cron so i could do with setting up the magento cron um, and the way you do that is by doing uh, bin magento cron uh, again put it in the comments bin magento cron install That's the oh what have I done P no such file directory what have I done? What have I done wrong? Oh, I've spelled it wrong. Like an idiot. There we go. So now we'll do cron tab. And it's up. Up and running. Um, so also, let's just double check. Um, there looks like it yeah looks like it so now I should be able to see on the front end Ooh. product images I might need to refresh the cache nah there they are coming in yeah they're all just loading in now lovely stuff right in I, uh, I hope that's been a useful tutorial, quite a long one, 45 minutes or so, but I do go on, don't I? So you could, once you're used to it, you can smash that out in 10 minutes and deploy. Most of it's just hanging around waiting for computers to do some work. So you're, um, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna do it in a lot less time than that. If you like this content on this channel, please give it a like and a subscribe. Also, I'm gonna pop a link in the description for Nimbus, uh, just be useful for you. Um, and I reckon 
that I, there's, there's more legs in this I'll do some other um, tutorials on deploying to using different software um, 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 and what have you uh, yeah great stuff well I've enjoyed this one I hope you have too I'll uh, see you soon